are jumping in and spawning in the top right hand corner of Alkyon. We have our South Korean Terran player. We have the Red Terran representing Shopify Rebellion. It is Byun. So I'm just setting up his team. Beautiful. And sporting in the bottom left hand corner, we have as a opponent, we have the blue Protoss player representing himself, currently teamless, the ex military Protoss. It is Zown. Again, he's leading the series 1 to 0. And if you're in the chat, predictions now open, place your bets. Even though Zown is ahead of the series, I will say it is not out of the realm of possibility for Byun to make a comeback for beyond to win this game and then the next one we have seen it before we could see it again this could still go either way uh, despite the rough position that beyond is in um hello mr scv <laughs> as beyond does skirt around the edge of the map it looks like beyond is setting up for a proxy e oh, sorry for an ebay block i would imagine meanwhile we can see zan is scouting for a proxy rax there is no rax in position the probe moves out and the scv moves in and he is setting up for that engineering bay let's go eBay has been placed, and the longer this goes on, the worse it's going to be for Zan. We'll see how and when he does scout his natural. Probe is moving out. We'll confirm the setup. It is the beginning here of a Rax. I was going to say Rax expand, but because of the eBay block, it should be Rax into factory. Yeah, Zan, he's going to be forced to expand elsewhere. Forced into the unnatural natural. Let's go. There we go, the Nexus has been placed, and now Zan is exposed. Now Byun can try to take advantage of how awkward it is for Zan to defend. Again, Zan, his natural, and his main base are quite spread apart. Because of this, Byun can go into a faster factory, into Hellions, or into Cyclones. We see, though, that Byun goes for a CC on the high ground. So Rax expand into a bit of a later factory instead. So Byun is not being hyper-aggressive. He could have thrown down the factory before the command center, but instead, he chose to do it after the command center instead. So there's no rush for Byun. Reapers are being active, true. Shield batteries on the way at the natural, just so Zhang can be safe. Byun rotates further back in. Yeah, just confirming what's going on. We have our tech of choice. It is going to be a Twilight Council opener here out of Zeon. It's going to be Twilight Council most likely into Blink. Now, again, we did miss out on game one, so we're not fully aware of what did transpire there. Don't know if uh, Zeon played Blink or who played Stargate into Phoenix. Robo into Colossus. Ooh, was the Reaper does fall. Nice pickup. Very nice pickup here out of Zeon. Now he has that much less to worry about, and we can see that Byun is setting up for a Widowmine drop. So, a pretty standard economic opener, to be honest. Widowmine drops, they're less designed for killing workers and more designed to scout. To get into mineral lines, to check for the tech. Again, I believe Byun is in the dark, checking his vision. Yeah, he has seen nothing in the main base. He has no idea what he's up against. And he needs to, he needs to find out soon. Um, also, before I get ahead of myself, sorry, it happened in the last game. A shout out to KJ. Yeah, baby, guys. Yeah, I apologize. I don't. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude. Uh, we missed the raid earlier. It was happening mid game, and I, I didn't want to draw away attention from the game itself. But a big shout out to KJ Freedom. Um, I believe you were casting the FSL, the Family Star League. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We have been providing updates on the FSL during the podcast each week, so. Um, it has been a lot of fun kind of following the storyline of all the teams that are taking place, all the teams that have, I should say, come together for the FSL, and all the players as well. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the raid. Hope you had a great time covering it. And uh, welcome. Welcome, one and, all, one and all, to the KSL. So, big shout to KJ. For those who do not know who KJ Freedom is, he's the owner of Sidestorm Gaming, a very passionate fan of StarCraft. Very passionate. So, much love. Much love to KJ. Cyrus is catching up. As Zhaun is going to be taking his third. So far, the Widowmine drop has yet to commit. And Byun hasn't seen much. I mean, upon seeing all these Stalkers and Lack of Phoenix, Byun can piece together that it is, of course, a Twilight Council opener. 
Black West Beyond getting into his own 3 1 1 setup. Three Raxes, one Factory, one Starport. Tank production has begun, and it's going to be on Zound to slow down the push as best he can. And we also have the answer here to the follow up. This is going to be a very gateway heavy composition. Link Stalker into Charge Lens. So very gateway heavy. What does this mean? This means that we're going to be delaying splash damage. We have delayed Storm and delayed uh, Disrupt, sorry, Disruptor or Colossus production. We may get there eventually, but it'll be a little bit further down the line. So here comes the initial move out of Pyun. It's going to be so down. Widowmind Joe comes in. Late reaction. Oh, oh my god. Massive connections. 10 probes go down. And the Widowmind are saved. Ay, ay, ay. Zan, he was otherwise distracted by the move outs. And Pyun is popping off. Does break out across the map. Bearing in mind, Pyun does not have stim. These are vanilla marines. Tanks do siege. Sound backs up. Trying to recover, trying to regather his forces. And behind this beyond, he gets his third base on location. He has map control, so may as well. He's getting it on location. He's also ready to punish any kind of face check here from Zan. Zan, he spots the Marines, and does he push forward? Up. Oh. As Udon drops, they come in for a second round. Up. Oh. Into the natural. Probes all the way. And the shot does not quite go up. Okay, better cleanup here by Zan. Much better cleanup, but the damage has already been done. And I'm sure Bian is content. Likewise, we have attempted Raven Harass into the main. Bian gathering up more forces. Does reinforce with, reinforce with more Marines, more Marauders. Zan going for a counterattack towards the left hand side, but Bian does have a spotted Marine. Okay, he's in position. Observer gets sniped. Marine spots the main army. Beyond knows. And he pulls back. Beyond does pull back. Zan, because he got spotted, he respects it. He backs off as well. So just a little positional play here between our two players. As we are just calming things down and saturating our third bases. We can see Zan here on three base saturation. Beyond likewise also getting up to three bases as well. Zan is staying on a very low gas count because of the mass charge lot. I mentioned before that Zan he doesn't really have the economy or the gases to sustain something like Storm or Disruptors or Colossus. So it's it's purely Stalker charge lot. And with, with some Immortals as well. And this kind of army as we do get the Raven going down. Raven does fall. Does pick up a cannon. Oh, not quite. Cannon survives on 3 HP. Let's go. <laughs> cannon barely survives. Uh, but this kind of army composition from Zaun has a lot of potential, especially if it's out on the map. It can struggle pushing into these kind of positions. You can see here the Sim City. Um, it does create these choke points that Zelts have a really hard time engaging into. So Zaun, he has to pick and choose his fights very wisely here with all these charge lots. He has to fall back. Ideally, he wants to try to catch the army on siege or with a surround. Speaking of surround, Zandi sets up a flank. A little bit mistimed. Immortal goes down. A rough start here for Zan. The flank comes in, but a little bit too late. As left hand army has already fallen, tanks are cleaned up. And the Zelts, they do collapse on the army. They can try to force a pickup. Oh. Uh, the padding's a little bit too good. So many Zelts going down. And Zan is trading, but uh, not the best trades here from Zan, I should say. So he's going to be losing another Immortal. No. Oh, my God. Barely the Immortal is saved. Marines are cleaned up. And Bjorn has to pull back for the time being. But back at home, he's building up. He's reinforcing, this time with Ghosts. Oh, boy. And as you can imagine, against mass charge lots, and, or mainly a gateway-based army, uh, Ghosts and EMPs can really pop up. They can excel here in this kind of game state. And you can see Beyond Skybrook ahead here in army supply. Zan being left behind. Now Zan does, att does attempt to expand. Alas, does miss the main army. As a result, Zan is out of position. Going to be rotating over. Trying to keep up. Still no extra gases. Still no splash damage. 
down trying to come in from behind. Oh, the transferring workers. Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> 11, 12, 13 probes going down. Yeah, the mind shots are brutal. GG gets called and Bjorn will overwhelm. Bjorn ties up the series one to one. GG. A very robust game there by Bjorn. Very solid. It was able to pop off with his initial Widowmind drop, which did get him ahead economically. And again, Zan going for this mass charge lot composition. Um, it can do well. I don't think this game was really too represent like it didn't quite represent the power of this kind of style. But you do need a solid economy. You need to be you need to be ahead in the economy. You need to be able to overwhelm your opponent with mass zealots. Alas, you know, Bjorn had map control. He could be quite greedy behind it. He killed 10 probes in the early game as well, coming into the mid game, and it was just a really rough setup there for Zaun. And couldn't quite recover with that kind of a with that kind of composition either. And now we're getting into the ace match. We're getting into game three. Meanwhile, looks like we have an update here. Uh, it was happening over on Dave Tessa's stream, but Dave, he was covering the tail end of Dark versus Lunacy. Dark did take the series 2-0 over Lunacy, but big shout to Lunacy, of course, for competing here tonight, for taking part, and for doing his best against Dark. So, GG, well played. Uh, but that does mean that Dark is waiting for the winner of this series in the semifinals. Likewise, we also got another update. Triple did take down Gemini 2-0. Triple is now facing over against Hero. We're going to be following this series into Dark, into lower semis. We might be able to cast the upper semifinals as well. We might be able to cover both. And here we go spawning in the bottom right hand corner of site delta we have the south korean terran player we have the red terran representing shopify rebellion it is beyond and spawning in the top left hand corner we have as opponent we have the other south korean Proto the other south korean player the south korean protoss player the blue protoss rep oh, representing himself the ex-military protoss player it is zan Now we are going to be entering Side Delta. Side Delta, a much larger map. Um, I say, I say large map. Alkyon, not too, not too shabby either, but is a large, larger map in the map pool. It has a ramp coming into the natural. It's very defendable here on two bases. Now, traditionally, Bion has been very greedy on this map. He's been very greedy on Side Delta. We've seen time and time and time again Bion go for fast third bases, going for a three CC three racks or three racks in general here on Side Delta. I'm curious if he does that again or if he is deviating away from that. It's been a couple of weeks weeks since we've seen Bion, you know, be all about three CC builds, so he might be calming things down and going for something more standard instead. We shall see. As the probe scout comes in, single gas opener. So once again, Bion is going for a Rax into expand. This time, no eBay block. This time, there's no denial here of the expansion. We can see Zaun being as annoying as possible, trying to delay the CC, but isn't able to for too much longer. Command center is on the way. Meanwhile, Bion going marine first into reactor. So. No SCV scout out of Bjorn, no Reaper yeah, scout. He does fully wall off with that depot. And does he go for the third CC? Have my attention, Bjorn. You have it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what the follow up is going to be here. Probe is forced out. Gonna be scouting here on the top right. Gonna be staying hidden for a while. We'll see if we do come into any kind of hidden tech. Meanwhile, show us a third CC. Yep, there it is. Three CC, three racks. And ah, thankfully, we brought this up earlier. Again, three CC builds are very common here on side Delta, specifically from Bjorn. Like, Bjorn, he loves it. He loves going three CC, three racks. So we should be seeing a second and a third racks. There's a second racks on the way. Very greedy, very economic. But Bjorn often gets away with it on this map because of how large it is, because of how long it takes to move out across the map. Like, Bjorn feels comfortable being greedy and cutting corners. We should soon be seeing that third Rax. Now, the power of this build really doesn't come into play until the mid game. The reason for that, when you rush into a third CC like this, when it lands and when it gets saturated, which is going to be faster than normal, once Bjorn gets up to that three base saturation, then he just snowballs out of control. Because how quickly he does get there, he does just amass up a terrifying bio army, and he can and he has overwhelmed many of Protoss in the past. Right now, the pressure is on Zaun 
to either keep up or exceed the greed of Byun or punish the greed of Byun. It's, of course, the other option here. Um, first things first, though, Zan has to scout. Hallucination is moving out across the map, and Zan is making his way towards the main. We can see here that Byun is being active with these Marines, hoping to try and deny some scouting. But alas, he will miss the hallucination, and Zan now knows. Oh, he see. Oh, uh, he kind of knows. Sees two Raxes. There we go. He does get behind the army, and he does confirm the third CC. I was going to say, seeing all these Marines could just be a three Rax. So Zan had incomplete information, but now he knows. Now he knows everything that's going on. There's that third Rax now on the way. This is going to be eventually a stim timing here from Byun. And Zan is being active. Now, how many Stalkers is the question. Uh, he's got one gateway here at the natural. He has a two gate... Oh, sorry, one gateway in the main. So, two gate blink into a third. Economic build here by Zan. I do give the edge to Byun. Um, because this is a two gate blink build from the Protoss, he doesn't really have much to punish. Like, this is the army. He has four Stalkers. And this is really just a contain. It's just a contain, just a scouted move out, and to chip away and maybe try and delay the third... But uh, Zan is not really, he doesn't really have much map presence here. And he follows this up with a bay into Colossus. So this is just a pretty standard build and a standard setup. Zan going two gate blink into a third, into Colossus production. And uh, we'll see what Zan can do from there. Right now I do still feel quite uneasy here for Zan. As Bjarni already has his third CC, he's making three SCVs at a time. Uh, he will soon be landing on location. He's awaiting for his own stim. Once he has stim, he can make sure that he can deal with any kind of aggression, and the Stalker specifically. He kind of forces them back, and then he can expand. Now, the bay is done, but we do see that Zhaun, he's going for a War Prism first, which I do appreciate. Prism is here, and Zhaun now has potential to harass the main. Which, again, I do feel like it's quite important here. So try to get some economic damage. So the prism is going to pivot in. It's going to be set up to dive in. Likewise, uh, turret's being thrown down. Biani's playing safe. Does get his turret. Gateway explosion for Zhaun working towards charge. Still just focusing on his production, still not really, but well, still is lacking an army. Still building up. And here comes that third. Third base is on the way. Now, once Zhaun spots the third, he can try to apply some pressure, try to pull the attention of Byun to the Stalkers, and then slip in with the Prism. Speaking of, here it comes. Prism into the main. The main army of Byun is here at the third. Ooh, Observer gets spotted. Observer goes down. And the Prism does not dive in. Not yet. Again, Zan is hoping for a better distraction. Speaking of, he is dragging the army further into the map. Prism goes in. Tara does do a lot of damage on themselves. They do get dropped into the mineral line. SCVs. Oh, some of them are going to be going down. He gets one. He gets two. Two SCVs so far. Marines. Oh, the Marines. They shut down the Prism. Prism goes down. And with that, Bjorn can focus on his push. There's one Zell left in the mineral line. But last, it's going to fall as well. Now, Zaun did rush into Colossus, and with two Colossus, Zaun, he can hold his own. But remember, I did mention that Byun, he doesn't really hit his final form until his third base gets saturated, until he can make use of this third base as well. So Byun, he does have a supply lead, and that lead should just get larger. The lead should just, uh, should get bigger and bigger at this point. And Byun, it looks like he may just not move out until he gets Ghost Production. Ghost Academy's on the way, it's halfway done. Uh, Viking Production has begun as well. And there's no rush, to be honest. Like, there's no rush for Bjorn. Bjorn doesn't have to move out anytime soon. Doesn't have to break the third. Doesn't have to break the fourth base. He does spot the fourth and is now aware that it is being taken. But Bjorn is merely just setting up for now. That's a lot of marauders. Oh boy. Meanwhile, the war prison was rebuilt. Scan reveals the army location. Bjorn is aware. Moves in towards the third base, gets a Zealots. Going for the Mineral Lion. <gasps> going for the Nexus? Oh, it's down. He's out of position. Shield battery goes down. And Bjorn, he doesn't have to commit. He pulls away, bleeds out a couple of Marines, bleeds out one Marauder. And then he backs off. 
So nice little pickups here for Bian. Does pull away. His quite heavily stimmed here, but now he can recover. And again, Bian doesn't want to fight head on without his ghosts. Speaking of, here they come. The ghosts have arrived. Vikings as well. Bian doesn't want to hit an anti timing. Meanwhile, Sound getting ready for his own Zealot counter attack. Here we go. The ghosts have arrived. Second star port for mass Viking production. Speaking of Vikings, they're looking for the pri oh, oh god, <laughs> they're looking for the prism, and they find it as well. And this war prism was the only thing keeping Bjorn back at home, and now it goes down. Now Bjorn, he can push. Now there's nothing to stop him. Zaun does spot the move out. Speaking of Zaun, he has two sorry, two colossus. Yeah, he has two colossus, and now getting into disruptor production. There is still potential with these disruptors. Even though Zaun he is down in army supply, he can pop off with those novas. Observer gets sniped. Zan is looking for the main army. Bjorn turns back around to deal with the Zealot. Zan is aware. Oh! EMP does connect. There we go, so Bjorn. Oh my god! Bjorn, no reaction, doesn't pull away, takes another to the face. Good start here for Zan. Good start for the Protoss. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> And we're going to need a couple more of those, as both armies are maxing out. But so far, so good. It's like, mate, you can land your MPs, you can even kill my Colossus, but what about the ball spot? True. EMP of the Archon never goes off once again. Yon pulls away. <gasps> he pulls away, but not quite in time this time. Another big connection. Zan having his way with the arm. Remember, this is on the current map and the current patch in the current map pool. So Nova is a one-shot Marauders. They do still one-shot. Zan enjoying it while he can. Ooh, but the armies they miss each other. Uh-oh. Uh, -oh. uh Zan, he misses the rotation. Piani pulls back though. He's coming in from behind. First chopper goes down. Vikings, they do come in for a flank as well. Getting the Colossus, just a really awkward fight for Zaun. Ooh, another big connection though. Oh my god. The Novas, they're popping off. And the final Colossus falls. The Vikings, they're not really doing too much here. Dead supply. Again, it's not about the Colossus, it's about the Disruptors. Novas going off once again. Oh, they catch the Ghosts. A good chunk of Ghosts go down. Reinforcements have arrived, and Zaun, he's having his way with his army. Oh my god. And again, we've already seen Zaun take down Clem last week. He took down Bjorn as well. Now he's looking to do it again. And can he close it out? Another Nova zones away the army. He's going to go, go for the kill for the CC. CC goes down. Bjorn is knocked down to three bases. He did get his fourth up and running as a planetary. But Zaun has momentum. Yanni keeps taking the balls to the face. No, oh, no. Speaking of, boys are being pulled. Nervous going up. Up. Once again, good connection here on the Marauders. And yeah, nice splits here from Zaun. Spreads out those Novas. Marauders are stimming in, though. That's a lot of Marauders here for Bjorn. Hey, Sims in. He catches out all the Stalkers. Big cleanup. Stalkers do fall, but here come the reinforcements. Stalkers, they come in. Zelts as well. And Zaun has done it. He has done a GG, gets called, and Zana will take the series 2-1. to one. Whew. GG. GG, well played, Zana, he does it again, he takes down Bjorn, did go to the ace match, and again, this was a good start for Bjorn, but at the end of the day, it came down to the army control. Did come down to the army control, and we saw Bjorn take one too many Novas to the face, Baby, They did continue to connect, and they built up, or they gained value over time. Uh, Bjorn, unfortunately, could not afford those losses. We also had, of course, um, arguably an overcommitment into the Vikings. Did do well killing all the Colossus, but it was only two, not three Colossus. Only two Colossus, then into Mass Disruptor. So the Vikings weren't, uh, unfortunately, they weren't adding as much value towards the end there. And, yeah, last Bjorn could not keep up. GG. GG, well played. Congratulations, Zan will advance on to the semifinals. And with that, I believe we have our semis ready for us. Let's go. 
we have our semifinals ready. Uh, it is going to be a PVZ between Dark and Zal. Let's go. <laughs> 